jobs. Um, I guess I'm probably best known as a, a pretty radical radio broadcaster. Um, I'm currently working on BBC Six Music, and uh, that's a UK-based radio station, um, broadcasting worldwide digitally, and I feel very privileged to be in this position. Um, do a little bit of writing from time to time, S still like to do some live DJing, and uh, I would like to feel that actually I'm a bit of a wild horse in a music industry that can certainly um, play a very safe hand in 2018. <laughs> How do I discover new music? It's um, a really interesting question. I have, I suppose, a great network of younger artists and boutique labels right across the world um, that I really love, that I'm very passionate about, that I have direct connection with. But I, I guess a lot of it also is about searching. Um, you can't always rely on things that just descend in your inbox because otherwise you're never really stretching any further. So. You literally just have to, I suppose, stake out a 10-hour period <laughs> in many given days across the week and just dive in on SoundCloud, on Bandcamp, and see where that leads you. I like to see the shows as a, as a bridge between this incredible audience that I have on one side, and here's the show, and it bridges to a place where you can find any number of really sensational uh, avant-garde artists, uh, I suppose, without boundary really, and it, it's about how you, how you make those connections between those two groups of people, and I think there's a huge audience with a, um, an incredible appetite for all kinds of sound that's really progressive, that's really thrilling, that's brand new, and I'm in a very unique position, I suppose, with a platform at the BBC to be able to deliver that, and uh, I, um, I love it. <laughs> They're very, very challenging times for young artists. Um, how you make some kind of headway, how you distinguish yourself um, among the, the masses of choice, I suppose, that people have out there, but I still believe that if you're doing something that you're really passionate about, something that you really believe in strongly, and you give a piece of your soul to, really, people will discover that, and people will respond to it. And it, of course it begins very slowly, but you will create real momentum for what it is that you're doing. Algorithms are so dull though, don't you think? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, seriously, you go round and round in the same circle of six artists. I mean, God bless the robots, they're not quite there yet, are they? Um, I guess what's really interesting about radio is that it's all about the human element, really, I suppose. You know, um, it's live in real time, it's presented by hopefully somebody that's very much like myself is really passionate about the music that, that it is that they're bringing to a, to a live audience who are with you in the moment, who can respond to you in a moment on social media. There is a genuine element of family, of community that comes with radio listening which is entirely unique and it's something that a streaming service can never offer to you, you know. It's, we're human, we are. <laughs> I always wanted to do this. I don't have a plan B. My father had banned music from the house altogether, so I wasn't allowed to buy records and I wasn't allowed to listen to them. That, that didn't stop me. I, I still went out and bought loads of punk singles and I stashed them in a little sock drawer in my bedroom. But my dad would always find those records and smash them up, unfortunately. But he didn't find a tiny little transistor radio that I had. Um, it was about as, as big as a can of tuna fish. and. I used to listen in the dead of night with like a blanket over the top of my head um, to John Peel's radio show when I was a kid. And I suppose John was my greatest teacher, you know, he taught me to listen to music without any kind of boundary at all. He taught me also that actually 
What was fascinating about music was that you might know that it existed and that it was there. And I never listened to John's show expecting to love every single record that I heard. I listened to it because I was fascinated to learn about, you know, this kind of rainforest of sound that he discovered. I can't imagine a greater way to live this life, really, other than some sort of anthropological explore, <laughs> exploration of the musical terrain of the world, you know. It's something that never loses its thrill for me. It's my favourite thing to do. It, it's quite sad, actually, when people say to me, you know, are you going on holiday or have you got any hobbies? <laughs> I, I always kind of usually say, if I'm going away somewhere, it'll be usually to see Nils Fram play. Um, and I don't have any hobbies because I, pref I prefer working over and above everything else that I've ever done. Um, but I, I guess also, conversely, that puts me in an extremely privileged situation. So, you know, I'm happy. I don't know if that answers the question. <laughs> yeah, <that's good. laughs>